Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel and welcome to another episode. I think it's episode 10 of Unhinged TikTok Girls. Yes, yes. A series in which I react to some unhinged makeup hacks, unhinged makeup tutorials, unhinged beauty fails over on TikTok. That's right, you guessed it. I believe I am psychic. Today is in fact part 10, which is a special occasion, isn't it Biscuit? Because I had no idea this would do so well. You guys are loving them. <laughs> oh, do you know what? Over Overnight curls. I don't know if they're worth it. Sometimes they turn out lovely and then sometimes they do this. What's happening here? Creepy shit! Cyber Monday sale on iGloop for Mr. Biscuit. We have seen a lot of just about everything so far in these episodes, my lovelies. We've seen some extremely alarming allergic reactions. We've seen some lip lining hacks which just make us go like, oh, wow. And we've also heard some harrowing tales of people's experiences with makeup artists. So that's not good, is it, my loves? It does beg the question, what are we gonna see today? Just what is this? I swear TikTok is just a lawless place sometimes. I'm calling the police. If you wanna follow me over on TikTok, it is XXLuxaria. I don't post very often over there, I must admit. But if you see anything that you'd love me to react to in one of these videos, make sure you tag me in it or DM it to me. If you do not know me, my lovelies, my name is Luxaria and this is my co-star, Biscuit. You always look like you're very uncomfortable, but you're quite happy sitting like this, aren't you? Yes, I am. And don't you dare talk to me. I've been a makeup artist for six years and I also have a biochemistry degree because I have a fundamental interest in the way that things work. During these videos I try and use some of my makeup expertise and perhaps pepper it in with a little bit of science as to why something does or doesn't work or how you can get the best result from a product. Isn't that right Mr. Biscuit? Yeah I love my wig. Put a wig on your biscuit. The dishwasher is beeping. Beautiful. This is Mr. Biscuit's current favourite toy. It is missing limbs and missing fins and covered in fluff but it's rubber and he loves chewing it, so I'd much rather he show on this than anything of mine. Oh, yes. Ah. So if you hear some rather suspicious rubber squeaking in the background, just know it's Mr. Biscuit enjoying himself. All right, my lovelies, make sure you're sitting down comfortably. Grab yourself a beverage. Oh, she's back. <laughs> Pop your little hanger right into your little TikTok hole and let's watch some unhinged TikTok, shall we, my loves? Here we go, girls. Oh, what's this first one? Okay, I see some, I see some things, some stuff and things. Do we like stuff and things? We don't know yet, do we? Let's watch. I am not being dramatic when I say this is literally the smartest thing I have Wait, ever what? seen. I've had my septum pierced Wait, for about hang on, I'm years, sorry, wait, I looked away for a quick second and missed the whole thing. What's this? I am not being dramatic septum. when I say this is literally the String. smartest thing I have oh! ever seen. Okay. I've had my septum pierced right, for about see. five years and I've been struggling oh. with eyeliner for even longer than that. So if this works... I'm going to use white face paint instead of mascara because I already have makeup on and I think this will wipe off easier. And even it out. Okay, do we think that worked? I'm leaving the string there for a second, just in case. Has it worked? Up. Follow the line. Follow the line. My eyes are pretty hooded, so I might have to like kind of work around it, but fill it in. That looks promising. I always like fill in under my eye when I do eyeliner because my eyes are like kind of weird. Okay, hold on. Let me take this out. I think this worked. Hold on. String, please. <laughs> and then wipe away the little bit of excess. Wow. Well. In my hair. How did I get it in my hair? Whatever. What do we think? Do we think it looks even? I think it looks even. It does my look pretty even. My eyes are a little even. bit uneven, so. But, like, look. I might have to start packing a little bit of string in my makeup bag. Look. Good hack. I will be keeping a string with me. Oh, well, I'm quite surprised about that. I mean, who knew septum piercings could come up with something great, girls? I could not believe it. So, essentially, this is something I've spoken about before on the Chanel. I probably wouldn't do this as a professional makeup artist because I can't really think of a scenario in which I'd be like, Oh, your little septum ring, let me get all this string out. I feel bonita. Like, I don't think that that would ever be appropriate, but there we go. I actually really miss my septum piercing. I miss it so much. My nose job still hasn't fully healed yet, so I'm still a little bit like, I'll wait a little while before I get my nose redone, yes. Essentially, this is creating a guideline from the edge of the nose to the edge of the eyes to create that V shape that works with your cheekbones, with your contour and with your jawline. That's what you're doing. You're trying to mimic this V all the way up your face onto your eyeliner. One of the easiest ways you can do this is actually take your liner and press it. Let me show you. 
This is just a McQueen eyeliner from Yes Style. It's actually one of the really good ones. It is the waterproof tattoo pen liner. And it has uh, a tip like this. So it's got like an actual fine liner tip. The way that I would do this is just rest it against the edge of my nose, rest it against the edge of my eye and do like a print. I'm not gonna do it now because I do in fact have eyeliner on. And that gives you the same kind of idea as using a guideline like this. We've seen it done before with tape, we've seen it done before with rulers, we've seen it done before with string, but just not actually through the septum piercing. I mean, apart from me finding it perhaps like a little bit unhygienic perhaps to pull string through your septum ring and then pull it out to like your eye area. Like obviously you don't really wanna rub like nose juice into your eyes. That might not be the most hygienic practice. <sighs> But I'm also not completely, like, I don't completely hate this. I think if you're someone that needs a little bit of extra help with getting your eyeliner even and getting it gorgeous, get it into a shape that works, I don't see why it wouldn't work. It's just kind of a bit shocking to see, I think. You know? You know. Gosh, it's just everything on TikTok these days. Look at her. She's old. Would you use this technique if you have a septum piercing? Would you? Let me know in the comments below. Right, what's the next one, girl? Watch till the end to see why I wouldn't do this again. Oh, I've been in that situation once or twice. We're gonna mute this one and we're gonna watch. So what is that? Is that a lip balm? Oh, directly into the palette. That's not very hygienic. Um, and it becomes a liquid liner. Oh, right, hang on, lady. Right, hang on. Are you speaking now? Chapstick and eyeshadow. Let's do it. Oh, I'm gonna go with palette. this gold eyeshadow right here. Right. It looks like this. Ooh, Let's apply it and see what happens. No, I wouldn't bother. Whoa. This is gorgeous. And I still have a lot on there. So I've had this on for a little bit. As you can see, I finished the rest of my makeup. Oh. And here's why I wouldn't do this hack again. It's gonna crease. Look at my eyeshadow. Of course. Do you see how patchy it is yeah. just from moving my eyes? So in the future, I would just be applying my eyeshadow like I normally do. Okay, so I can sort of see why that might work at first, but I also sort of think there are better options that you can do something like this. When it comes to metallic eyeshadows and you want that high coverage glam payoff, the best thing to do is actually apply it with your fingertips. Failing that, you can use one of those horrible, horrible, horrible little felt tip sponge brushes, whatever they are. Do you remember like the Dior palettes used to come with them? And I used to think, Ugh. Gum. They were very popular to come with like cosmetic stuff back before like the cosmetics revolution of like 2013, 2014 in the drugstore. But if you really, 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 really want the ultimate payoff for a metallic shadow, what I would do is get yourself a little makeup mixing palette and use a little bit of eye base primer and then take a little bit of your metallic eyeshadow and actually mix it in with that. So it creates this kind of almost like a cream texture that will set. Most eyeshadow primers set. I'm going to cream. One of my favorites, which I think is gonna be my favorite for all time is the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly. I love it on me and I think it creates a beautiful shadow base for almost everyone that I've put on. There's only been a couple of instances where I'm like, do you know what? No. Mixing that together to create a paste and then applying it gently to the eyes in the areas that you want. Being careful not to overload the area because creasing is always going to happen if you have too much product on there. Like chapstick mixed with eyeshadow is never going to set because the whole point is it keeps the area super moisturized. That's why we apply it to our lips. Moist. No. It might look amazing for like a photo or a still moment using something really glossy and mixing it with uh, like a shadow to create that ultimate like oil slick gloss effect. It looks great in photos, but it does not wear very long. It's not got any longevity. Looks great for about five minutes and that's about it. Maybe not even that. Oh, what is this? Oh my goodness, okay. Taking a completely left field uh, direction for this video. Is there anything more 2008 than this? And the thing is, I already recognize that eye. And the reason why I recognize that eye, well, should we watch it? It's because I use it as cutaways. Let's have a watch, shall we? Are you tired of flat, boring hairstyles? Do you go through a can of hairspray trying to get that full volumized oh, look? Goodness, then maybe bump ozone. it up with Bump It! Bump it and up. get that salon style look fast and easy. Bump It's are the incredible self stripping hair accessory that give you perfect style and volume. No, I'm sorry, I have to pause it. Like, look at this advert here. I know that they're like, oh my god, plastic in your hair, great. But like, look at how big this piece of plastic is. That is such a chunky piece of plastic. And you just incredible expect self stripping. This you expect this tiny little section of hair at the end here to like disguise a lump of plastic on your head? I don't think. Get a grip. What were we all collectively experiencing during the 2000s? Delusion. 
that give you perfect style and volume every time. Perfect Go from and flat to fabulous instantly. Imagine being able to create today's hottest oh, hairstyles no. in seconds. Why? And they're so easy to use. Alien, Anyone can be a stylist. Oh, Simply cut your hair at the crown, give a little tease, insert Tease it. I've just it pissed up, it off. And you're ready to go. Just ready look to at go. the difference. But where is she going? Where is she going with hair like that? Where is she going? The bins. Hello. Just bumping it up with bumpets. And get that salon look every oh, day. Wow. You'll also get the small bumpets. Oh, the small it's great bumpets. To bump your bangs or bump oh, a ponytail. God, bump and your the bangs. large bumpets. Perfect for those special occasions or when you want a little extra high volume. Plus, the easy to follow style guide and this professional teasing cone. A professional Use piece of blonde, plastic. Light brown or dark brown black. Oh wow. Bump it up with bumpets. Three options. Remember to pick up your bumpets today. What, is that? what was happening in the 2000s? What was all this about? What was this? Like I never used a bump here. I can't I don't think I even had friends that ever used a bump it, but when we look at the shape of this tool, bump like it. Oh, sex. I'm not a hairdresser, but I know a thing or two about hair. Where's the shape of this tool? Hang on. Ah, there she is. We saw a woman there going like this, like vigorously shaking her head. How is that gonna stay under your hair? If you're vigorously shaking it, like it's just, it's, it's a piece of plastic with like these little bumps on. Oh, it's obscene, isn't it? Bump it. Imagine. All right, what do we have next? Okay, we've got Julia Gisema. Oh my goodness, I can already see this is going to be quite an experience. Okay, the worst reviewed makeup artist uses Tipex on face. Tipex. The bins! If you guys don't know, Tipex is like white out. It's one of those things where when you're writing by hand and you go, Oh my god, I've made a mistake! I've soiled my tunic! Use Tipex to basically white it out and then write over that area. It's not designed to go on the skin, shall we say. Alright, let's watch, shall we? Oh my gosh, quiet. Da, da. Da, da, da. Is that it? Mm. Is that Tipex? It's close. Um... I cannot tell you how badly I wanted to scream at the screen. Why is she tipexing out her work? She put glitter on my eyelids. That's now not tipex. Tipexing it out. Have I missed something here? That wasn't Tipex. This product, we all know what this product is, don't we? If you were around on the internet recently, or hang on, let me find a good picture. That product, madam, is a Jeffree Star concealer. Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my bins. Not Tipex. But interesting, okay, maybe she wanted to use the word for like, oh, whiting out my eyelid. Why is she whiting out my eyelid? Little bit clickbait, though. No, say, we've all been there. What are they gonna do? They're gonna shoot me? I doubt it. She put glitter on my eyelids, and now she's tipexing it out. I do find it odd that the makeup artist has put glitter on the eyelids and is then putting a concealer over the top. That's not something you will ever learn or ever pick up working in industry. Absolutely not. Oh, and then just no setting? No setting that, just straight on with the lashes. Oh, dear. Oh. She literally tipexed my whole face. Oh, it's not only is it like, I don't, okay, we haven't seen like all of this video so far, but I'm just, I have to talk about this a little bit. It is so unhygienic to go in from the product straight onto someone's face. Always, always, always as a professional makeup artist, even if you're just concerned with the hygiene and using your own products, always put it onto a makeup mixing palette first, then use a brush or a sponge or an applicator of some sort, disposable, rewashable, to apply it to the skin. You don't know how many times that wand has touched someone else's face, gone back into the product, lets the product sit and then like sweat in its own bacterial gloop. Beautiful. You don't know how many other people have used it. You don't know whose other skin it's been on. You don't know if those other people maybe have like a skin condition. Not good, not good. I'm not enjoying this video so far, my lovelies. Not enjoying it, no. You're watching the BBC. Too much. Why, we're gonna make the whole face, like, this is a heavy duty concealer as well. Oh, 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 what a vigorous technique. I hear that's how she died. Uh. Ready for the morgue. I feel like she wrote like an SOS code there, like E-I-A. 
It was like some SOS code is for this, help. Is this fake? Which I definitely needed. This might be, I hope this is time. fake. But there are, like, it does look like a professional setup, kind of, with, like, things on the wall in the background. <gasps> Full lipstick and just uh, this one. Um, you can do four lipstick, yeah. Straight from the yeah, applicator this one again? Is really nice. Wait yeah. one second. No, this has to be fake. This has to be fake, my loves. No, it can't be. And just uh, glitter? Yeah, so. Yeah, I'm saying glitter, okay? Just a okay. little bit glitter. Mm -hmm. Open your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. It's finished? Yeah, it's finished. Okay, thank you so much. Mm. Like, for context, this is my skin, my hand. I'm not that white, but it doesn't look white, but trust me, I'm not this white. Okay, <laughs> I need to have a bit of a moment to think about what she's done. <laughs> I'm on my way. So, I unfortunately do not know the context for this video. There's not like a part three of five million. It's just literally like, this is the makeup that's happening. This is going on the skin. This is it. Like, if the makeup artist here, if we're to believe that this is in fact a real video and not in any way, shape or form, clickbait for the internet, no say, then we are looking at a costume style makeup. If the makeup artist was like, oh, for your wedding day, I'd be like, mm, okay, is she getting married in Alice in Wonderland? Off with his head! There isn't a lot of uses for white concealer. Maybe if you're doing something very specific or you have really fair skin and need that little extra help in creating those gorgeous highlights on your face. White concealer isn't really meant to be applied all over the face. Really? I don't think I've ever really used that in a situation that calls for actual, like, glamour makeup in anywhere of my career, shall we say. Again, I just can't understand why this makeup artist would put glitter on an eyelid and then be like, I'm just gonna remove that, actually, by going over it with white concealer and then not set the concealer but put more glitter on top. I mean, it's not for me, but I hope this is clickbaity video. Also, it wasn't Tipex. It wasn't Tipex. It was Jemima Starship Concealer in white. I think that was a sneaky. Right, what's this one? Next, we have one by NYX Cosmetics. Oh, you've seen Girl Dinner and Girl Math, but this is girl fixing. Okay, what do we have? Oh, she's eyelinering a car. Okay, women in STEM. What a beautiful video. <laughs> Right, okay, no. I hope you're not gonna put that eyeliner back on your eye after this. Right, what is this? Like, sure. She's out driving in her car. She's gone, oh, Mary, lovely to see you. Smash, and then decided to go, oh my God, what have I got in this bag? A NYX eyeliner. Oh, quickly. The insurance won't know anything. Oh, wow. scandalous. Claimed and shamed. <laughs> Tonight on 999. A little bit of freezing. Uh. Listen, we've done it. <laughs> I don't really feel like you should be putting eyeliner onto your car. I mean, sure, it's not gonna hurt your car, it's not gonna hurt you, but I would not then be like, one for the car, one for me. Good heavens. The next one we have here is by Makeup 780, and this is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous eyeliner. I sort of feel like, okay, I'll hold my tongue, let's watch. Wrong drawing method. Okay. Oh, I see. Artificial lines. Right? Yes. Yes. I actually feel like this might be copyright music, so we're going to mute that. Right. So she's lined the bottom, yes? And what's this? We're going to use a... Yes, okay, to rest your... Yes, so you don't disturb the makeup underneath. Oh, and to pull it down. Okay, yes. We've created a faux underneath... Ah, a little like bounce for a little womanly, delicate little woman. What are they called? Eyelashes. <laughs> okay, that's quite sweet. We're going a bit over the top. Okay, that's cute. I quite like that. Oh, 
Oh, do you know that the idea of drawing on artificial lashes on your lower eyelid has been around forever? The first time I think I saw it ever like mainstream, I might be wrong in this, is on Marilyn Monroe. She actually used to have like a, it was more of an eyeshadow technique. She would use like a dark shadow right on the edge to sort of give that illusion that her lashes would go out a little bit further underneath, creating an extra shadow. In fact, have I done it today? Ah, where's my mirror? Have I got mine on? Yes, I've done it today. God, I've been wearing makeup for ages. You can see it's just a little bit of an illusion of extra lashes on the underside of your eye. Underneath mascara will create just a little bit of an illusion of a fuller lower lash line. It's not for everyone. And of course, when you are really close to someone, you can tell that they are drawn on. But they're a wonderful way. Like if I'm this far away from you in a video, I don't think you'd be able to tell that these little lashes back here are actually artificial and not really there. A witch. If you want to try this in a way that's going to look even more natural or even more neutral, shall we say, you can use a brown liner, the same sort of one that you would use for uh, an eyebrow, or you could even use gray. And as I was saying earlier, a little bit of eyeshadow in the same sort of pattern will create really, really gorgeous results. I love this. It's an easy way of enlarging the eye without actually putting extra lashes onto the eye, because sometimes they're a little bit uncomfortable. But yes, I love it. I love it, girl. Right, what's this? The struggle right, is real. That eyeliner is looking good. Oh, I can't see it. Oh. That's all right. I'll just make it thicker. What the hell? I still can't see it. I am going to make this so thick. Fuck, I still can't see it. Oh, well, I no. might as well just cover my eye black and look like a panda. It's a line. Oh my gosh, I can see it. Okay, it's time for eyeshadow. Ooh, that's some smoky eyeshadow. I can't see it. Oh, relatable content. Relatable content. So, all right. Should we talk about something? Should we talk about monolids, deep set eyes, anyone with hooded lids? Like, should we talk about the struggle for a second? So before my surgery, in fact, actually, you can still kind of see it now. If I look straight at you, without tilting my head too far down, if I look straight at you, my eyelids kind of disappear, although you can actually see them a lot more now since I had my orbital rims shaved down during my FFS procedure. Isn't science amazing? So what can you do to actually get a liner if your eyelid is in some way covering the very top part of your lash line? Unfortunately, sometimes it does just mean the type of eyeshadow and the type of eyeliner look that you want to go for might just not work for your eye shape. If you find yourself in the situation in which your eyelid is actually fully covering like your upper lash line, you have to transform the eyeliner look from something that's a bit more up to something that's a bit more out. In fact, actually, perhaps even <laughs> this septum trick would work quite well for this. You may find that it might actually be a lot more of a flattering look to extend the eyeliner from the lower lash line out. Depending on the contour of your orbital rim bone, you may also have to angle this liner slightly down or curve it slightly round like that so that when you look straight on, it creates a beautiful upswing like that. Unfortunately, this is just one of those cases where you need to sit down and practice. And if you feel really, really, really lost, go out there and follow a makeup artist online who has the same eye shape to you and they will be full of tips and tricks. For my deep set eye girlies out there, I don't contour away my deep set eyes. I actually enhance the depth by creating more rounded shapes with shadows, with light, with dark, and then extend the very edge of my liner outwards. And that's what helps create the larger eye outwards as well as upwards. Oh, it's a lot, isn't it, my lovelies? It's a lot. Who knew? Sparkly rocks from the ground could be this complicated. She's got a B-Tech. Right, what do we have here? Okay, the Lauren Elizabeth with what's this? A foundation routine? A contour before foundation? Interesting. Let's watch. What is this copyright music? Right, what's this? What? What? This is absolutely terrifying. Terrifying? So we're going to try it. Okay. I think I might as well just turn this into a series. So this is part three of testing unique foundation routines. Oh. I don't own liquid blush, so Li we're just going to use lipstick. Oh. Okay. Here we go. Well, liquid blush isn't usually as pigmented as liquid, li bl 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 liquid lipstick, and it doesn't usually and dry quite as quickly. Clean. Oh, look, see? This sponge wasn't working. Already a problem, girls. Getting this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, you know how little kids get into their mom's makeup bags? Yeah. I'm using the concealer from Kylie Cosmetics. Right. I don't think this is using going to work. It's contour. all too dry. Blending Did she say that was contour? That's. That's very fair. I'm so scared contour. to blend this out. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, the foundation better fix this. Oh, I hate watching wait, this. Wait, wait, hold on. Um, okay, I love it. 
Mm, oh, it's always wanting me to watch Crystal Versace. Ow. I think maybe my TikTok is like, you really need to watch her. All you talk about is makeup girls. I believe I am psychic. So to be fair, a lot of these hacks are meant to give you results that are A, faster or B, more exciting than you usually would have. The foundation she's applied here is clearly a liquid full coverage. So it can cover all of that redness that you've put underneath because what is the benefit of having red underneath if you're just going to cover it all with full coverage? coverage foundation. You are adding an extra step into your makeup routine that won't necessarily give you anything back. I must admit she did use lipstick rather than liquid blush here. I still don't really see the benefit of applying an entire face of liquid blush when you could just apply that liquid blush into wet foundation and it would give you the same result as like a soft tinted kissed by the cold on a winter's evening. She's got a B-Tech. But you'd be applying a lot less product onto your face. Therefore, wasting less wasting less time, wasting less money, and falling for a trend? I don't know. Sometimes a lot of these makeup hacks that we see just aren't worth it. The whole point of a hack, as I say, is to save time, save money, or save a technique or something, and none of that was achieved here. But honestly, do what you want, my lovelies. If you want to cover your whole face in liquid blush before you put on your foundation, go ahead, my loves. I'm not gonna cancel you on Twitter. <laughs> Arrest her! If you do use this technique, let me know in the comments box below what you think about it, like why you use it, what benefits does it give to the overall look, because I can't really see the point right now. Oh, Wait. Naughty mummy. Oh, what is this? Makeup by Anessa. Anissa? Anessa. Oh, oh, oh. Oh dear, right, okay. I, I need to hit, what's this? What's, what is this? Okay, one size, we gotta talk. One size? I just bought this setting spray from Sephora yesterday. Right. I literally just sprayed it on my face. I don't. Oh. <gasps> what is happening? This is not okay. Did I get a defective bottle or something? Like I, I'm so Oh my God, what happened? I had to redo my makeup, but don't get me wrong. I'm still gonna buy that setting spray, but I just wanna know what happened. Okay, okay, right. Okay, so I actually have a theory as to why this has happened, why this has happened. Let's take it back to something like spray-on deodorant. When you spray on deodorant and you get it too close to your skin, it kind of creates that like whiteness. There's like a white film. Technically, this is an ingredient, quite often something like magnesium, designed to stop sweat or designed to absorb moisture or something like that. So I have a theory that inside the one size setting spray, there's gonna be either like like liquid suspended powder in the form of silicone or something designed to like absorb excess oils or prevent excess oils from being produced from the skin. Something in a similar akin vein to like magnesium that you would find in, or is it al is it, is it magnesium or is it aluminium? She's got a B-Tech that you would find in like antiperspirants, those sorts of things. This is technically not an acceptable outcome. Absolutely not an acceptable outcome for a product that you have bought on the high street and go, because people expect things to work, don't they? So you're not gonna be like, oh my God, what? I've actually seen this happen with another product previously, but it wasn't like a an aerosol product. It was like a pump spray. And it was essentially a super mattifying spray. It contains suspended silica that you could then actually see on the skin. Now, I don't know if it's one of these things of perhaps this product has been sitting on the shelf for too long and it's become a little bit separated in the bottle. Maybe she hasn't shaken it up enough. Maybe something like that. Maybe it's too much product, too close to the skin, something like that. All I can say is this seems like a defective situation. And if it's this easy to create a problem, perhaps this product needs to be looked at. <laughs> I've never used it though, but I do see a lot of people really enjoying one size, especially the powder foundations and the like makeup dissolving spray. That's seems like an excellent idea as well. I don't know why this is very giving me like dry shampoo, like drying out agents. There's got to be some sort of like oil control agent that's just gone a little bit wrong in this product. So I'm actually on the One Size website now looking at the ingredients for this On Till Dawn mattifying waterproof setting spray. And the one, two, three, four, five, six ingredient is magnesium carbonate. That is like an oil control, sweat control ingredient. I have a feeling that's what might be causing the problem. There's also a copolymer in there a little bit further down before water. I wonder if maybe that could also be causing a problem because copolymer is a, it's actually a form of like acrylic that's meant to like thicken things. You'd usually see it in something like lotions as a pH regulated thickener to give that like luxury feel. So I wonder if maybe something in that product is not 
happening right. The formulation for some reason has become destabilized. But that's my little science woman. Right, what do we have next from Cassandra Maurin, girls? Carve top brow, carve bottom brow. Carve the top, side, middle, carve the bottom. All over lid, forehead, Ooh. bridge of nose, cupid's bow, chin. Concealer on inner corner, concealer on outer corner, brain together. And other side, concealer below jawline, cream contour on forehead, cheekbones, jawline, sides of nose, eye crease, and other side. Blending from top to bottom, forehead, eyes, nose contour, under eyes, cheekbones, cupid's bow, chin. Add a little bit of your foundation, blend everywhere. Some liquid blush, blend, fill in eyebrows, set under eyes, the cheekbones, brown eyeshadow, nude eyeshadow, shadow wing, a pair of lashes, powder bronzer, blush, lip liner, lipstick. I mean, I'm absolutely gobsmacked there. Okay, lovely, lovely final look, sure, but this is a lot of product to put on the skin. She already had amazing quality skin. Quality, is that the word I'm looking for? No. Look, if we go back to the beginning of the video, you can see here, she's got gorgeous fresh skin. There is a weird little TikTok filter, I swear, just on every TikTok video we see, there's always some sort of weird little filter, don't know why. I'm gonna tell you the reason why I do not like carving out the brow in such a strong way with so much concern sealer because if we look really close on one of the last little images you can see this area here in her eyebrow it's her natural skin color showing through and it's a lot more pink based hue than the warmer more yellow toned foundation concealer product she's used around the outside of that brow and to me as a professional makeup artist when I meet someone like this in person I don't know why my eyes are immediately drawn to their eyebrows and I'm like I can see your natural skin color and it's not the same as the foundation that you're wearing. There are some cases in which that's gonna kind of happen, like if you ever wear fake tan, or if your face is just a different color from the rest of your body, sometimes it just happens. But I just think it looks like so much product is on the skin because there's this really sharp line between the natural skin tone and the eyebrow and the eyebrow hairs and everything. To me, it just looks a little bit unfinished. There's no blending, there's no care taken to really get this product worked into the skin and looking beautiful and flawless. When I see this much contour, this much concealer, this much like bronzer happening on the skin and then going to blend it, that product has nowhere to go. It has nowhere to blend because part of the point of blending product is you're moving an area of high density product into a lower density area. So to get that like gorgeous gradient on a contour or to get that uplift from a concealer underneath the eye, you want the heaviest parts to be here and here. If you're applying a thick layer all around, you've got nowhere to blend it to. It's one of these things that might look really great in photos after a little bit of retouching, but in person, it really looks like the skin is just overloaded. I am, however, a fan of like, you do you. You really do you. If you wanna wear this much makeup on a daily basis because it brings you confidence or it makes you feel a certain way, you can do that. It's absolutely fine. As a professional makeup artist though, it does feel a little bit uh, what's an analogy I can use here? Like, if you have a hammer, everything's a nail. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? Like, you're putting too much into it. You're thinking too much. You're doing too much. Scale it back a little bit and add more if you need it. It's always better to be able to be in the position where you can add more than take it away. Makeup like this doesn't usually last very long either. It doesn't wear very nicely on the skin. Because the skin has nowhere to, like, produce oils or to move very much, the makeup on top of that is just gonna crack and it's gonna start to gather in areas. It's gonna start to break down. It's just not not gonna look the same as she's just applied it as it will eight hours later, 10 hours later. My personal favorite area of makeup is getting things to be as waterproof as possible, as long wearing as possible, and to look almost as identical as when you first applied that product. But in saying that, my loves, I do wanna say she picked a gorgeous color for her eyeliner. I think it really complements the shape of her eye and her natural brown eyes gorgeously. Beautiful, love it. Oh, thank God. Oh, what's this one? Oh, are we putting more red on the skin? What's this? Listen, I heard through the grapevine that you've got a thing for Cal. Is this Cal? Oh no, who told you that? Just the grapevine. Right. Um, there's something you should probably know. Right. Oh man, this is hard. Um, the thing is, me and Cal are kind of, you know, Ooh. together. Oh. Yeah, he's my man. I'm more out than Cal is, but it sucks because he acts like we're not a couple at school because he's embarrassed, but... We get home and he's the best boyfriend this is I've so ever distracting. had. Wow, I I'm sorry. I totally respect that. Hey, thanks a lot for telling me. That's cool. Fly. Just, you know, don't touch me because I'm not into girls, so it kind of grosses me out. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, cool. Anyway, thanks a lot and just, you know, stay away from my man, bitch. Okay, it, well, that was the crossover we didn't need. <laughs> South Park have really done everything at this point, haven't they? I stopped watching a very long time ago, so I don't know if Cartman and Stan are actually in a relationship. But then again, these characters are based in school, so I guess anything can happen, can't they? We're drunk! 
really drunk. In the end, I think this is actually quite a cute little look. Nice little butterfly for social media. One of the things I easily overlook in my makeup looks is that you can shift the way that an entire makeup look looks or reads if you use a slightly different tone of highlighter. So here she put a little bit of like a bluey purpley highlighter across the cheekbone, across her decolletage, and a little bit under the eyebrow as well. Maybe not necessarily something that everyone wants to look for in a day wear look, but you can add a little bit of excitement to an evening look, can't you, by just shifting the tone of a highlighter. You lock me in the cellar and feed me pins! <laughs> I need to remember that in future. Must remind myself. All right, what do we have? Oh my god! Always patch test hair before dying. <gasps> oh no! Is this a PPD reaction? Oh, what a nightmare! What a nightmare! Honestly, what what are you meant to do in this situation apart from go to the? Uh, can I? We, can we pause it, please? I want to look. Wait, what can you do in this situation apart from going to the emergency room? There's not really a lot you can do, is there? So. Beware of PPD in certain types of hair dyes. And also I think it's actually used as like a henna substitute in certain areas of the world. It's not. If this is a PPD reaction, which it kind of looks like, PPD can cause a form of quite a severe acute contact dermatitis. And it can be quite a severe reaction. Annoyingly, PPD. Its full name is paraphenylene diamine. It's actually a class of like allergens, which has a really unique um, quality about it, shall we say. She's a problematic one, she is. She's not just that frenemy that's like, you look great. Ah, she'll actually poison everyone else against you. PPD has a very odd relationship with other things that are very, very similar to it. So if you have a reaction to PPD, it can induce further reactions to chemicals that are of a similar nature, but wouldn't necessarily cause a reaction by themselves. She's a very toxic creature. We don't necessarily want her anywhere near our beauty products. It's also one of those things where I'm even surprised it was even used in products in the first place because it has a really high rate of becoming a problem. Like it's not just a rare allergy, it's actually quite a common allergy. So it doesn't really make any sense as to why it was on the market in the first place. Very odd. Gosh, that swelling is rather intense though, isn't it? I bet that took a little while to go as well. Yes, always patch test your hair dye if you're using something new or if you see the words new and improved formula on the box because it means something's changed. And you can never be truly sure if something's changed that you're gonna be okay with the new formula. Beauty products, honestly. If they didn't keep us beautiful, we'd just all cry, wouldn't we? <laughs> right, what's this? What's this? Oh, hang on a minute, sir. Hang on a minute, I think I already see what this might be, but let's watch. Okay, Cindy Ruth 5. Oh no, 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 copyright music. Okay, what's that? Oh, pop goes the weasel. Oh, you poor thing. Is that vascular occlusion? Looks like a bit of vascular occlusion caused by a hyaluronic acid. Pen. So my lovelies, if you've wanted to go for lip filler and you've ever just find yourself Googling, can I do lip fillers at home? No. You will quite often see this product pop up called a hyaluron pen or a hyaluronic acid pen, DIY filler pen, plumping pen, something like that. Essentially it uses a form of technology which fires hyaluronic acid through the skin to an area to fill it out therefore not needing any needles, and therefore it's marketed as like a do it yourself at home. Just press it on, press go, and pump it up, girls. Let me explain to you why this is a terrible, terrible, terrible idea. When you go to a filler practitioner, a respectable filler practitioner, might I add, they're gonna know exactly where that filler needs to be placed very carefully in order to get the maximum impact effect. That is also gonna look like what you want it to look like. When you push something like the hyaluronic pen right up against the skin and just press go, Where's that filler going? You don't know. You don't know how deep it's going. You don't know which area it's gonna go to. You don't know how far up, down, left, right it's spreading. The technology has been utilized for other things which are of course very important like needle-free vaccines, needle-free insulin. I think there's also a couple of other ones that I'm missing in there. Freezer. What is this? But the main problem with this pen is that you cannot control where it goes and therefore complications like this may occur when a vein gets disrupted by hyaluronic acid and it swells up and it bruises. This product, my lovely, is not for me but I must actually say her eye colour is drop dead gorgeous. Look at that, demon queen. Right, what do we have next, my lovely? Ah, oh, have we stepped into lip filler territory here? Oh, where would we be without a lip filler gone wrong? Right, okay, let's listen to it. Brenda Hayes' story, shall we? Oh. So I tried out this 
new lip injection okay at this lady's uh clinic that i went to and okay. i don't know if i like it oh she's a comedy queen <laughs> oh no is that it okay so what I is like this it. oh no so okay it just kind of looks like she's had a particularly bad allergic reaction to a new filler of some sort. Unfortunately, this is the thing about fillers, Botox, anything like that. If you find a brand that works for you, don't really veer away from that brand, to be fair. A, it's not the best option to have multiple different types of filler in your skin anyway, due to some pretty rare complications that can arise from that situation, but also different formulas utilize different types of ingredients manufactured to different levels. You might find that there's a certain type of hyaluronic acid filler versus another type of hyaluronic acid filler. Both say 100% hyaluronic acid filler, but you don't know where they were produced. You don't know what else was produced in the same sort of manufacturing area as them you don't know where the components have come from for that you don't even know where the needles are from granted these are all standardized things that should not vary but sometimes they do and then we can have situations like this arise but as i always say sometimes the body is just a bit weird and can be like do you know what this time no go shit your pants girl creepy shit the body can't live with her can't live without she's dead well my lovelies what a tiktok to leave this video on i don't know there's something very alarming when lips go wrong isn't there because they're such a like important part of the face that suddenly when they become very much like the biggest part of the face it's a bit like oh what happened to you are you feeling okay <laughs> and with that my lovelies let me know what you think about the tiktoks we have seen in today's video because once again it's the most unhinged expression ever i will always 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 shout from the top of the rooftops though my lovelies a little bit of a guide for your eyeliner can be absolutely game changing and with that my loves it's time for the patreons you can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here yes you can i'm also back to doing my instagram shout out my lovelies and today's instagram shout out goes to sneaky snacky if you want to be able to the chance of being featured in my next video's Instagram shout out, make sure you follow me on Instagram. It is xxluxaria. And as always, my loves, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patreons. Orcos Samoji, Ari Adia X, Becky Johnson, Beebles32, Shell Herman, Christy Crownover, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Elizabeth Stone, Emily Worsham, Eric Castillo, Finn Dunham, Jen Martin, Caitlin Wright, Larry Lane, Leanne Jones, Les Banana, Min Min TM, Mariah Sherman, Miss Kiss, Noven Bricks, Paola Rivera, Ryan Vita, Steph Utah, Tech, the Chaos Collective, Vicky Walsh, and Victoria Carella. And do you know what, my lovelies? I think I'm going to leave this video on a very clear note. Always make sure you go to a professional, because if a professional manages to do something wrong, they should be able to fix it, or at least point you to the ER, which can fix you. And with that, my loves, I'll see you in the next one. <gasps> yes.